And welcome to a bonus little episode of the G Namer podcast because uh, we've just been to EGX. I'm your main man, Luke Summerhays, and I'm joined in the room, in the flesh, by the man, the myth, Chris Pengilly. Howdy. Um, so, yeah, we've just been to EGX. Was that your first time? No, you went last year, didn't you? Yeah, I went, I went last year. I went for a day uh, last year. I've been to Res before, but this is my first time at the full EGX show. Uh, what uh, what did you think of it seeing it's your first time at proper EGX? Uh, it was pretty good, to be honest. The stuff that was most exciting was the Res stuff anyway. Yeah. Playing all the little indie stuff I wouldn't have heard of. There were big games there, but A, massive queues. Yeah. And B, most of it's out in a couple months. Yeah, that's like the difference this year to last year. Like last year I played Bloodborne and that wasn't coming for like six months. This year the I played Division today and that's like the only game that's... N- Coming out in like six months, that was there, apart from uh, like Mirror's Edge. Mm. I suppose Star Fox is a little while away now. Yeah, that's obviously with the delay. But presumably this was arranged to be there back when they thought it was coming out Yeah. this year. Uh, that's the first game I went and played today, but Star Fox Zero. Uh, bloody good it was too. Uh, looks nice, not as nice as it could. I'm still a bit iffy about some of them textures, mm. but uh, the skybox is looking incredible and it's all nice and bright and colourful. And it plays a treat. It plays like. Star Fox. Yeah, this is the uh, second time I played it. If you read my uh, diary, I played it on uh, day two, and I was a bit iffy on the controls, especially in the boss fight, but playing it a second time, I found it much easier. Uh, it was inverted, which I wasn't keen on, but it was a demo on the normal. You know, re- retail changed that to normal, so it should be it might, it should be fine. And if not, hopefully they'll have standard controls for people that don't like the motion. Yeah, so... um. Yeah, people, people have been moaning about the motion controls. I found them really handy. Just letting me... Because obviously left stick moves, right stick was speed. And then for so fine you... aiming, you've got the the, the, ah, the motion gamepad. Mm. And obviously, mostly looking at the big screen every now and then, look at the gamepad to pick out little enemies here and there. It's a really nice system. They've, uh, they've done it again, those Nintendo boys. Mm. Other than that, the only big AAA game I played really was uh, Halo 5. And they missed one at Nintendo. You played Xenoblade Chronicles X. Oh, I had a little go on that. Yeah, that was nice, actually. Yeah, that's, I only played it for about two minutes, because it's, uh, not, it's not really a demo sort of game, is it? A no. It's a sprawling weird... RPG. <laughs> yeah, it's a weird sort of game to demo, because a lot of the other games there, you play, like, one level, or yeah. you play up to, like, a cha- checkpoint or something, but that one you could most probably continue playing as long as you could get. Well, yeah, it was also it was on the massive TV as well, so that was quite nice. Yeah. Uh, I suppose I probably, if I hadn't played the Wii one, I probably would have spent more time on that demo, mm. just getting a feel for it. But basically, I picked it up for, yeah, this is the same stuff. Yeah. So I'll wait and play it properly. God, that game looks gorgeous, though. Yeah, it just looked good. That looked good. Just, that looked like one of the best games at the show, despite being on the, oh, the, the Wii U, it's underpowered. Yeah, oh, I'm not sure where the characters' faces when they, um, because mm, I got... Mostly looking at their backs anyway. <laughs> yeah, no, I got to a cutscene. Oh, right. And he went right up into, like, Elmer's face, or whatever she's called, the... Mm. Uh, go with like the well, white hair. Pretty much just anime people anyway, aren't they? Yeah. It doesn't make a huge difference. But otherwise, yeah, some some of the enemies and that look really nice. Yeah, it's a huge world as well. Which also takes you back to Star Fox, you know, like people saying it doesn't look great. The problem is you've got things like Xeno Blade and Bayonet that do look great on the Wii U. Yeah, so it's not a matter of power, it's just they've gone for a really simple graphical style. Yeah. And there's a few textures which seem to have snuck on from like Lila Wars. Mm. Yeah, it's weird that it's a reboot again. Well, yeah, I know. That, if they're going to call it Star Fox Zero, it should be about James McCloud. Yeah. Uh, they've missed a trick there. Uh, we played uh, the other big AAA Wii U release that's coming this year. A oh, little yeah. bit of a uh, Mario Tennis. Oh, yeah, which I just dominated you. I got one point. You got one <laughs> point! <laughs> <laughs> yeah, um, yeah, it's just Mario Tennis. Yeah. <laughs> If you like Mario Tennis, you'll like this Mario Tennis. That's yeah. about all you can say. Yeah. Looks quite pretty. The thing is it comes in the big November rush. Yeah, I can't see myself picking that up. No. At least not at full price on release day. Maybe one day on the cheap for yeah. a bit. Yeah, I think most people fun. will be knee-deep in Fallout. Yeah, that's not going to set the uh, set the charts ablaze. No. Unless you're Wii U only owner. 
Yeah, which a couple of our listeners are. Yeah. yeah. Hi, guys. <laughs> <laughs> All two of you. Yep. Or three if, uh, I don't know if the cappuccino kid ever listens to this. I, I don't Hi, know. Hi, if you do. He's got if free, not, he's, fuck you. He's got 360 as well, so. Has he? Oh, oh yeah. yeah, but that's And not... he's on about buying PS4, so. <laughs> Stop undermining my, my gags. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah, so then the other, the only game I played on the other console was a bit of a Halo 5. I had been taking the mickey out of Maz for queuing up for the Division for ages while he could be playing all these indie games, and then I went and queued up for like almost two hours to play Halo, but that Halo is bloody good. Yeah, it was, it was good. Yeah, the, uh, was it Warzone? Is it yeah, it's Warzone, it's copying up a few other games, but it's, uh, yeah. Pretty good I would say it's the though. first time the Halo multiplayer has felt like the Halo single player. I love the Halo games because I love playing like the campaigns. I love the big open maps and the big battles and there's enemies everywhere and you can do this and you can do that. But whenever I've played multiplayer before, it's been like little five-man games in quite small arenas. Mm. It just felt like a completely different game. Um, so this is a real... I'm really looking forward to playing a bit of this. When I finish the campaign, I'll have multiplayer that I actually want to hop into. And I can get some more of that Halo experience, which is what I love. Yeah. And, yeah, that's uh, good. Just as I finished that, I went out, and on the main Microsoft stage, they had the Master Chief there, Master Chief and Locke. Really big dude. They must be pretty buff under there. Wearing really good-looking, like, lifelike armour. Photo opportunities, people coming up on the stage. I went up, gave the guy my phone. He takes the picture, had a big pose. Ah, amazing moment. Get off the stage, look at my picture, press the back button. Realised he'd taken the picture on Snapchat. Uh, so it was lost. I did not have a picture of me with the Master Chief. And then I tried to get him to let me take another one. And he just laughed me off the stage. So. <sighs> there are a few people in the audience who were photographing everyone. So maybe, just maybe, I have got a picture of me with Master Chief and Locke. Yeah, there might be one on Twitter or it's, something. Yeah, I'm just going to have to keep checking the hashtag and hoping for the best. Yeah, hashtag. But. Yes. Uh, what. Idiot thing to do. Yeah, that was not great. Yeah, um, so other than that, it was indie. Have you? Well, what did you think of the division? That was your big game for well, today. Yeah, so, um, I haven't played it all week because of the queues, and I thought I'll play it last day there. Queue was I want to say about two hours long, and I played it for about fifteen minutes. Uh, and you, you got to that queue pretty much as soon as the doors opened. We did Nintendo, yeah. and then you went right there. Yeah, so. I went uh, pretty much right there, and it was a long queue. I actually jumped ahead on the queue because I was on my own, and it was three versus three versus, like, three. So a pair of, a couple were, like, together. And I was like, oh, they need a special person. So I um, managed to jump the queue, but I played it for, like, 15 minutes, and then the three teams all, like, doing their own objective, and then met in, like, the middle. And you could, like, still work together, and then turn on each other a bit like the halo where you know, yeah where you and team stuff. up and fight a boss yeah and there was like regular like npc characters called the cleaners or something it was okay but nothing to like shout at home about like when it first launched you know the first trailer like three three is it a third person yeah shooter? yeah yeah it's supposed to be an rpg oh. like I, i've seen trailers for it but i don't really understand what it's supposed to be no it was shown like three years ago and something and it's like and i you know it's like Oh, and let's make a third-person shooter, add RPG elements and a multiplayer, because that's like the big thing now, hmm. this uh, gen multiplayer. But yeah, it was okay, but really, out of the two big Ubisoft games there that isn't Assassin's Creed, Siege was much better than Rainbow Six. Siege, from the first trailer, I thought, has looked really impressive. Uh, yeah, that was uh, really good. Um, because I was in the queue for Division, uh, the queue looks right on to Assassin's Creed. Mm -hmm. uh, it uh, so I watched Assassin's Creed for about an hour. <laughs> that game looked utter rubbish. Uh, I've never seen so many things on the screen. You you. Uh, oh, that's always the problem with Assassin's Creed games. Like the character, like the enemy in front of you had a line around them. You had a map. You had other stuff. I've never seen so much stuff I think on I'd, the screen. I'd enjoy Assassin's Creed a lot more if I could switch all of that off. There was more Just stuff on the, at my own leisure. I think there was more stuff on the screen than actual gameplay on the screen. Yeah. It, was, it was covered up. It uh, all that animus bollocks absolutely ruins them. Yeah, games for me. and it. Didn't look that interesting either. They were playing as um, I, mean, I think she's called Evie or something. It's twins, or something. Yeah, the like girl. That. Um, they're playing as her, and it's like, yeah, it just looked really boring. I Some people are well into their Assassin's Creeds, but I don't see how you could sit through another one of them every year. Yeah. Madness. Yeah. 
Uh, yeah, and then really the big draw today was all the indie bits and bobs we played. Uh, I think the only game we both played together was VR Kart. Yeah. Which uh, I was one of only three people today to come first in yeah. my race. Yeah. So uh, I will take that to the bank. What did you think of it? Yeah, I thought it was quite good. I found it a bit uh, blurry. I'm having this issue with uh, VR. Like, I played the PlayStation VR, which is really cool because it like sits on the back of your head and then the visor comes like towards you by pressing a button so I can still wear my glasses. And then I played the HTC Vive yesterday. That felt perfect over my glasses. And then I've rift. Well, it's got like straps on it, and like sometimes I had it awkward, so I had to take my glasses off to play car. It looked a bit fuzzy, but it was pretty, pretty good to use the steering wheel and you know the pedals. Yeah, the uh, the game, was... the graphics were a bit simple. Yeah. If I was playing that on just a normal screen with a gamepad, yeah. it would be the most generic car game ever. I wouldn't even yeah. think about it. But with an Oculus Rift on, with the steering wheel locked mm -hmm. in, the pedals. The sense of being in a car and the sense of yeah. movement was really real. Yeah, and like real. I said to you in the queue, if something like Gran Turismo 7 is like... Uh, if you had that full if, setup. If that was like a VR like launch title or something, in like mm. you had a steering wheel and a pedals as well, that could be amazing. But yeah, the, e even though the graphics are really simple on VR car, the sense of being like really in a vehicle moving was really strong. Yeah. Uh, so it's, it does point to good signs for, well, racing games and sort of shooting like vehicle games mm. of any kind are what's going to make the most sense. Yeah. Because you are, in in the game, you're sat down in a chair. Yeah. Using controls, which is what you'll be really doing. So it's when you get into games where you're going to be moving around, like shooters or... Yeah. Event, that's when it's going to start getting quite yeah, tricky. Yeah, a lot of the stuff I played, um, I played the game yesterday called The Assembly, and you were strapped to a gurney. Mm. So you were just, like, taken through the level, and I was talking to them, and they were like, yeah, it's an extra exploration game and stuff so mm. i'm thinking more like and everybody's gone to rapture type thing it's more about the experience than the actual game so mm. you see those sort of things working well on vr yeah I suppose be anything where you'd be using the controller to move your body mm. is gonna feel really weird so until well, they until they iron that out mm. it's not gonna like fully replace gaming on a tv but you say that the best thing i'd seen all week was yesterday was hdv see uh vive yeah uh, it's a hard one to uh, uh, describe but basically you went into this room um uh, mostly the size of like patterns kitchen or something uh into this room in the middle of it is this uh, the vive headset and two sort of almost places to move wiimote type controllers with triggers on the thing put on the headset a trigger in each hand and basically walk around the room and obviously it's all on your uh, VR headset and then like I had this demo of actual kitchen mm. not to be confused with cat market and basically you had to walk to make a meal you had to walk to the virtual fridge open the virtual fridge of like the Wemo type uh, thing and open it and pull out the um, steak and then put it into the oven it sounds like something really boring you can actually just go it in. sounds like an, a really impressive yeah, tech, tech demo, demo but how many people are going to have a room big a enough big that's empty the, room in their house that just was for the, playing on their vibe that was and the, obviously every game would have to be contained to one room yeah and the, yeah like you said like the obviously like the issue of the connect had it and not no one's got the room and that could be the same problem but um it looked like the graphics of the kitchen thing was like really sort of like cartoonish, but it mm. finished with like a portal thing where you had to take. I don't know what the robot's called, it's the smaller one with the blue eye. We had to take him apart and repair him, so you're like using your move type controllers, like open the front of him and then bring all the stuff out and like opening drawers to try to find the screwdriver to try to find the fix him, and then GLaDOS like appears in front of you. It was really cool, and obviously. PlayStation VR has been shown to use PlayStation mm. Move and the PS4 has got a camera. So mm. it should, could be done on that. Um, I think Oculus has got a similar thing as well. We you put your hands in, it goes around your hands. So it's obviously motion gaming where you could walk around. Yeah, but it's just having the space to do it. It's a space to do it and then it's like, will developers want to go, oh, only 10 people's got this room where like 20 people can play a VR game sat down or something. Because mm. um, a lot of them, like you said, have sat down ones like Summer Lesson, that one that everyone likes in Japan where you like talking to like the school girl, oh, yeah. or sat down talking to her. So again, it's that sort of thing. What might 
the one you're talking about now with the room, I thought would be really impressive. Do you remember Resident Evil 4? Yeah. The bit where we were defending the house from the zombies? Yeah. A game of that, where you're just in a room. Yeah, so you mercenary. And them. you've got them coming at your yeah, walls. You that like, would be so good. Yeah, you could do like mer- Resident Evil mercenaries. Well, obviously, VR. you'd only need however size room you've got. Yeah. And then they'd, you'd have on your VR headset these windows of the zombies outside yeah. fighting off. That would be amazing. Yeah, you could do, yeah, things like that. Or like I said, you could have like a car like squished down into your room or something. And then you could actually like pretend to fix it. Yeah. So you could have like applications or something like... In like university or whatever, oh, like yeah. mechanic course. Or something. Be... You don't actually need a real car. You don't just. You but just... it would be like, it's not something people are going to have at home. But you might have, at like an arcade or like at a bowling alley. They'd have. Oh, we've also got the VR room. Pay us a tenner, you can go and play this yeah. game. So it's like I the can closest see you can like actually get up. to like Star Trek's Hollow Room without uh, yeah the Hollow Deck without actually having a Hollow Deck. That's what it basically. That's all of all of this, all of VR, all of three D TVs. <laughs> It's just trying to get us a step by step closer to the holodeck. Yeah. That's what everyone wants. That's mostly the closest it was. Uh, I could describe it as holodeck, but instead of actually being in there, you have to wear a thing and you have to have silly like move type controllers in your hands. It's like um, the VR they use in Red Dwarf. Mm, yeah, I've not. Uh, they've got like the helmet and they've got a thing on each hand and yeah. a thing on their feet and a thing on their crotch and yeah, uh, good times. Um, yeah. Then so what else have you played in I... the? Indie uh, Darlings. I played uh, Xbox today. I played uh, Flame in the Flood. Oh, yeah. Which is, um, I think some of the team on it worked on the original Bioshock. I'm not 100% sure on uh, that. Um, the original Bioshock must have had a massive team because every game that comes out now says from the makers of Bioshock. Uh, but yeah. they're like 2,000 people working on it and they just all spread throughout the gaming industry. I, I don't know if like... It was the cleaner or something that. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking. Is that worked? Oh, oh, yeah. I I drew like one picture to go on a wall in one of the rooms. So uh, yeah, I was an art lead on the Bioshock. <laughs> uh, yeah, but I think it was the team from the team that uh, some guys that worked on Bioshock and maybe other stuff. Um, it's got a really unique art style. It's like a survival rogue like thing, a bit like that. Um. Everything don't, that comes out at the moment. <laughs> yeah, it's a bit like that. Don't starve or whatever. Okay, yeah. But, yeah well, almost, and it's also got like a unique heart style like that. Basically, you're playing as this girl with this little wolf, and you had like, and it's got like on the bottom like hunger, water, cold, yeah. and stuff like you have to. So if your cold gets like too low, you have to make a fire. And I ended up killing her though, <laughs> <laughs> because um, you had to get to a higher up point for the radio, and I got onto my raft, and then I ended up. In the point where there was um, uh, a wolf, and the wolf just yeah, that sounds like a bit of a nightmare. Yeah, I'm just. Uh, what what else you play? Um, I played a little game called Call No Cast of the Seven Godsends, which was a side-scrolling. I don't know what you'd call it, really. You know, you're a, you're a lad with a sword and you chuck axes at zombies and fight monsters and what have you. But there's seven different gods and you can collect, like... Basically, they're the seven different power-ups you can get. Yeah. Each one gives you a different weapon, a different, like, skill set. Uh, it just... I mean, it didn't do anything super innovative or super new. But it just played really nicely. And the art style was... It's what the illustrations would have been mm. on this sort of game back in, like, the SNES era. So this is what I... In my head, the games are... Right, but it is it is good fun. Oh, I played the game that I actually backed on Kickstarter. Oh yeah, you said that. Yeah, it's cool. Met the guys. Yeah, I met one of the guys and um, one of the other people like was playing it. He was like, yeah, they also kickstarted it and stuff. And I had my photo taken with like the developer guy and like these two other people. So that's where she could be on Twitter or something uh, somewhere. It was the strength of the. Sword or something. I can't even remember the game <laughs> title. <laughs> it's like that's like the third different name you've told me today. It's got uh, the strength of the sword or the sword of the soul or yeah. it's got a sword in the title. Batman. It's got strength <laughs> in, the, in the title. Uh, yeah, it, it's coming to Wii U, uh, um, PS4, and everything coming to. Um, yeah, I played three levels in the boss level, and if you and the final sort of boss level as well but none okay. of the none of the power-ups he was just like chucking you right in there and the one the other guy that backed it had a go and he died in like five seconds against this huge boss because he had none of the power-ups um 
that game isn't easy if people are like doing it quite simply. But yeah, basically it was like in this arena, you would have like um, one or two enemies coming towards you and then you can like dodge, attack. Um, if you use a sword, you like you can stab them with the Y button. I played the 360 controller on PC, so you can stab them with like the Y button. You can like dodge. Um, yeah, it's quite good. It's also got a uh, strange art style as well. It's all about weird art styles. Yeah, you're really into your weird art styles at the moment. Yeah. Um, you know, you go from like the division realistic to something yeah. that's like not cartoony, but yeah, I don't know how. I'm trying to think what it looked like. It reminded me actually the uh, character I played as because there was two options. There was one with gun. I didn't. I tried the gun. Didn't like that at all. So I stuck with the sword, which made sense in swords and title. <laughs> Is um, it called swords and guns of strength? <laughs> no, guns <laughs> is definitely not a title. It reminded me the character reminded me a bit of Matey from Medieval. Minus. Oh, okay, the old little yeah. skull lad. Yeah. Yeah, I can't remember this way, but he didn't have a skull. But he had like, a front weird helmet. But, okay. Yeah. Free apparently, download title the original, and then this is like a sequel that's kickstarted. Amazing. Um, I also played a Wii U game, which was like sat and nestled in amongst all the indies, caught me by surprise, uh, called Word Party, which was you know a mini game collection, but they're all word games. So there was one of them called Bees, where little bees are flying around with three letter words on them, and you have to click on the ones which it would make sense to put B at the front. Mm. So one has ear, so like, oh yeah, that can make bear. One has, like, ogle, it's like, no, boggle, that's not a word. Um, there's stuff like that, and then there's, like, a word search, and click on the words with the right vowel in them. So what you're saying Just, is, Bala would love it. Bala would love it. It's the sort of game I'd probably play with my mum, actually. Uh, if it's not too much, it could be an, an enjoyable little party game if you're into your word games. I assume there's probably, like, a Scrabble-type thing, all of that. But, I mean... <laughs> I was there playing with them and the developers getting really excited. I'm like, how can I politely tell them that it's a bit dull? <laughs> yeah, that's the thing. I'm like, um, I met uh, one of the guys I met at the Welsh Games of Olympic um, conference. He um, um, recognised me and recognised me. And he knows, like, he have, he have got Gizmo that's on the uh, site as well. And he's like, yo, you don't want to check out our game again? And it's like, oh. Eat it before, I, even if yeah. multiplayer on it. And the game actually is quite good. It's a bit like um, N plus, but with, with, with is that actual... the speedrunners? No, it wasn't speedrunners. No. It was um, yeah, similar sort of uh, style graphics. Not as simple as N plus, um, like a um, bit more gra um, graphic style to it. And it's like if you jump down. You could only move left and then jump right, you can move right and you have to get through the level and there's like spikes mm. and there's like a multiplayer and that. Yeah, man. but yeah, speedrunners is similar because we watched that last Yeah, night. we didn't get a chance. To, it was there actually, I did see it, but there's a bit yeah, of a queue for that one. That's where those girls were. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah, this was a game that we saw at the party we went to last night. They had. I'll we'll have to talk about that in a minute actually because they did some quite interesting things with multiplayer. Yeah. But you know the game, Great Guiana Sisters, which I'm meant to be reviewing but I can't get any online games. But I played it and I thought, oh, this is a bit crap, but the idea is really solid. Yeah. Speedrunners is the game I'm waiting for. Yeah. So it's a multiplayer Does, platformer. Didn't, didn't Rumbo you... kind of fill that void, though? I've not actually played any Rumbo. Is that similar as well? Yeah, I think that's similar as well. Well, you, you have a circular platforming level, and you race each other around it, and the person, if you go off screen, then you're dead, you go out. Uh, just, but yeah, just I didn't actually play it, so it might be crap, but from what I was looking at, it looked really fun. It's really quick, nice like power-ups platforming looked pretty solid uh, so I do want to give that one a go actually and uh, there's actually one more AAA game that we both played Another triple a. Street Fighter 5 oh yes 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 we had a nice game of that just before we came home yeah we had pretty close matches actually yeah um I didn't find it that different to Street Fighter 4 no but not... I'm hardly a fighting game expert and I think no. they changed how all like the super moves work yeah because the... this is everyone keeps saying it plays more like alpha yeah. than the proper Street Fighter games to um... me Street Fighter plays like Street Fighter and this played like Street Fighter <laughs> so yeah that's... it's pretty much you know, I'm, not, I'm not your man unfortunately I'm still not pretty much that great as Street Fighter plays Kami I can do few boots with her, but nothing um, um, sort of I special. I can still barely do anything when I play with a gamepad. If I had a fight stick, maybe I could do a few more Hadoukens and Shoryukens mm. and all that, but yeah, I mean, it was nice enough. Yeah. Looked looks amazing. Yeah. Like, really detailed backgrounds and everything. 
hilarious London level with, you mm. know, Queen's guards and red phone boxes mm. in the middle of a train station. <laughs> and a gentleman playing croquet. <laughs> but yeah, look, um, you know, if you're into your Street Fighters, you're going to be pretty happy with that one, I think. Yeah, yeah. Shame it's PS4 exclusive. Yeah, it's also on PC. Oh, I suppose. And it's cross multiplayer as well, so. Oh. Yeah. 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 I'm expect as soon as Super Street Fighter Five gets announced, that'll be coming to everything. I expect. No, Capcom said that's not going to happen. Not any of the Street Fighter Fives. No, they, they said. Were. Yeah, they said Street Fighter Five. Must have ponied up some cash over. Whoa! How Sony was where did the deal? It sounded like the Street Fighter Five wouldn't happen if Sony didn't pony up the money. Nah, maybe Which I'm good. really surprised that how would Street Fighter not happen? Well, maybe four must have sold pretty yeah, well. but Saw Four can just keep selling more and more when they bring out. Super Street Fighter 4, yeah. Ultra Street Fighter 4, yeah. Street Plus, Fighter 4, Extra Yo- Edition, Street Fighter 4, yeah. oh my god. Yoshi Noro is a big fan of PS4, so ah, okay. maybe he wanted to do some sort of deal, I, I don't know. Mm. But PS4 is great for fighters, because Tekken 7 is exclusive as well, wow. and King of the Fighters is also 15. Is well, it doesn't exclusive. have Killer Instinct. <laughs> yeah, but when you've got Street Fighter and you got yeah, Tekken. Yeah, I know, if, you, if you're a fighter, then that's going to be your machine. Yeah, and then you've got obviously like... The Mortal Kombat and stuff. But yeah, I'm, I keep really wanting to learn how to play a fighter and get good at it, but never managed it, unfortunately. Yeah, I've never been that great on them since, like, PS1 area. era. I was good, actually decent at Soul Calibur, like, 2 on the GameCube. Yeah, but is that just because you were 13 and playing other 13-year-olds? <laughs> that, that... It's like playing the actual people who play fighting games. Yeah, and doing... that's the problem, I think. If I pick yeah, up no. Street Fighter Five, I think everyone online is just going to be just too good. I'll stick to Smash Brothers, I think. Mm. Um, but yeah, so last night we went to the community party and they did Wi-Fi Wars, which is really interesting. Um, everyone connects to the Wi-Fi, get, joins the site, and they have massive multiplayer games where everyone was involved. Um, so they had sometimes they played small games on the screen and you could just bet on it. Or they had games where you'd, some buttons would come up on your, or your phone and then you'd have to like solve the problem that came up on the big TV. So there was like a whack-a-mole, there was code breaking. Yeah. Uh, it's all just really interesting stuff, um, and sort of thing that I'd like to see a lot of in the future. Yeah, but, they yeah, said it's... they were taking it on tour or something like yeah. that, didn't they? And they're on about like, oh yeah, I could be like a good game show or something on TV or something. But, yeah, it, it was, was kind really of like fun. a flash mob, but gaming version. I suppose yeah. the best way to but describe any, it. But any any like convention or anything where you're going to have a big room of geeks in the evening, yeah, that's a really good thing to do with them. I really enjoyed it. Yeah. And then, yeah, the actual multiplayer games on show were pretty good looking as well. Yeah. A bit of that. Um, Speedrunners, they had a big rock band session. Yeah. Rocket League. Yeah, good stuff. Yeah. So, uh, yeah. Yeah, rock band was interesting. You only seen the two in the. Yeah. Like I said, um, <laughs> that's where those girls were with the Speedrunners. The, well, they, well they, there was a couple of young ladies who presumably had had a few beverages. Yeah. Who seemed to have they, elbowed well, their way into this band. Yeah, and I don't insisted. know where they were from because they're like, well, they sounded <laughs> took like about ten minutes to choose a song. song I mean, they? Took about ten minutes to choose a song and then wailed their way through a song they barely knew. Yeah, and, and all the crowd was booing them. The and... other band turned up and just had to be vaguely competent and quick, and everyone loved them. So. Yeah, and plus they played Oasis. So. Yeah, which, you know automatic everyone's on board just play a song everyone already knows and left someone play Tanisha's D tribute again yeah but it is the best thing best song in the world so no it's just a tribute oh uh, yeah <laughs> uh yeah so what would you say was your game of the show um like I said that HTC Vive thing was great but it's not really a game as a tech demo hmm. uh best game of the show otherwise um I'm gonna say Halo 5 yeah? Yeah, pretty much Halo 5. Uh, uh, yeah. Okay, I'm really glad you said that, because that frees me up to say Star Fox, because I was torn between that and Halo. Yeah. But yeah, between them two, even though they're both games I know I'm going to pick up and play anyway, so it's sort of a bit pointless to go to a convention and play them or whatever. Especially but if Halo 5 is out, out in like a month's time. Yeah. But yeah. it's, I was sort of starting, I get a bit of Halo fatigue, am I that excited? But having sat down and played it and had all the hype and the pomp of the stage mm. and Master Chief stomping about, I'm really excited now to play yeah. Halo 5. And, like I said, with a multiplayer mode that I really enjoyed, this means, even if the campaign isn't too long or too exciting, yeah, could a game be a game I keep coming back to? Yeah, I'm just thinking you'd play, play anything else today. That VR cart we played 
Yeah. Even though it was a pretty simple game, the actual experience of playing it, I really enjoyed. Yeah. So I'm glad I did that. Yeah, I tried. Um, oh, I tried actually two other VR games today when you were in the queue for Halo. Oh yeah. Um, I played. See, what did you play between when between the the queue when I was in the division queue? That's when I played a couple of. That's when I played that um, Seven Gods uh, one. Seven Gods. Couple yeah. of, there's a couple. I can't remember the others. There's a few other platformers and yeah, cause I was little gonna, RPGs I and adventure things. Esper and which you like sat on an office desk and you had to get like a Rubik's cube out. This was the Galaxy though. Okay. Galaxy Gear and it had like a track pad on the side of it and like you used the track pad to, like move like the cursor. Okay. And then like, you had to like look at like move your head, move the track pad to the like Rubik's cube. And mm. then get the Rubik's Cube and then put it in, like, Earth thing. And then Pollen How was, like, bizarre. Was like on a spaceship and you were walking around using the, free, using the 360 controller. Um, the left stick to move around and then the, your head as the right stick, pretty much. And then you used the right trigger to, like, put your arm out mm. to grab, uh, grab stuff. Yeah, that was it. both interesting. Like I said, it's more experiences than games, really. Yeah. On the um, VR stuff. In terms of games that I'm going to take home and play, it is your obvious ones, your Halo, <laughs> your Star Fox and your Xenoblade. But in terms of games that I'm glad I went to this and played, yeah. it's the VR things yeah. and the little indie ones that I might not yeah, have heard like, of otherwise. The only stuff that's most probably close to get a game on VR is I didn't have a chance to play because um, PlayStation VR or Morpheus, if you still want to call it that, it was a random pick, so I got Battlezone. But like, Riggs was there, and which is a free on free giant robot shooting each other okay, that multiplayer, fun. which is like still fairly basic, but you can like understand the gameplay yeah. of it. It's like, I'm a robot, I'm gonna go kill other robot, and it's multiplayer, and that's sort fun. of thing. And like, Capcom's Kitchen's there, which I yeah. get a chance to play, but then that's. Yeah. More of the experience again. Um, like I said, that summer yeah. lesson, that I was mean, probably in Japan. Oh, I'm going to teach a the girl. Thing, how to everyone teach says it, but no one believes it until they get the chance. But the, the VR stuff that's going around at the moment, mm. it works. It properly works. Yeah. And in a couple of years, it's going to be a really big thing. Yeah, next next year will be interesting. Obviously, we're more. Um, it's just it's the price at the moment. Yeah, it's obviously. But well, as soon as someone brings out a headset that's like decently affordable. Yeah, like the Galaxy's coming for. A, a hundred dollars, but mm. then what's the experience going to be like? You know, you yeah. use your phone, yeah. it might not be great, and obviously playing the games. I got a like, feeling eventually, either the Rift or the PlayStation VR, going to come down to a like a price of a pretty standard peripheral, and then it's going to be something that's really yeah. worth looking at. Um, that's and once, once they're in a lot of hands, then you're going to get a lot of games being made. Yeah. And you'll get uh, all the stuff that we're waiting PlayStation for. PlayStation VR is the cheapest one to go into because all we need to do is buy a PS4 and a VR headset. Yeah. Um, so it's the cheapest point of entry of a more robust one where on Oculus you have to buy a decent gaming mm. rig and then the Oculus on top. Mm. Um, so it's... Yeah, but it, that's, that's the thing to look for in the future, I think. Yeah, but next year, well, well... Well, when Nintendo bring out the NX, which is going to be Virtual Boy 2, I think we all know that. Yeah. It's going to be a hybrid home console and game, um, handheld console and VR headset. Yeah. <laughs> triple hybrid. Triple, yeah, triple <laughs> hybrid. That would be interesting if it ever was. Yeah, but it could be interesting. That'll because, do, I love that. Yeah, because PlayStation <laughs> VR is supposed to be coming, like, early next year. And, mm. like, the Assembly game I played, they're like, yeah, it's coming to PlayStation VR early next year. I feel like... I Everyone don't... in the games industry has been talking about Oculus Rift for about five years. Yeah. Like, I feel and that's like... coming early next year. Yeah, but it's been coming early next year, every year for the past <laughs> decade, hasn't it? Yeah. yeah. So, yeah, I'll believe it when I see one in the shops, basically. Mm. What was your low light of the show? Uh, low light of the show? Ooh, that must be, like, the worst. I'm gonna actually going to be quite controversial controversial here and go Star Wars Battlefront oh okay uh, yeah I played it the same day I played Rainbow Six Siege and they come out pretty much the same day as well the same mm. time both December December's quite a mad month this year but this whole these next few months yeah well, starting from this month really Metal Gear onwards yeah is carnage yeah but December is like it's all one week in December as well it's like Xenoblade Just Cause Rainbow Six um, Star Wars and it's like I went and played Rainbow Six multiplayer only shooter, no single player. Mm. Okay, it's got terrorist uh, mode. There's multiplayer only. Work, you know, work as a team. You know, five versus five, really good. And then you can play Star Wars, which is also multiplayer only with no single player. Mm. Has got a split screen co-op, which I played and it's actually quite good. And it's basically horse okay. mode, 
but then there's only two of you playing it. Mm. Um, I don't know if it's changing, but I think it's only still only two players of one wife. Uh, her, and it's like, yeah, it's fun, but I'm just thinking it's a multiplayer shooter. The only thing that's really good about it is it's got Star Wars skin. I so it, that's the thing for me. I got a feeling that'll be enough. Yeah, if you take it with, looks like stepping into the film, and that's all yeah, I really want. If you took away like. You know, playing on Hoth, but if you just made that generic snow planet, mm. or, you know, oh, we're playing in the South Pole, a sh- shooter, and replace the Imperials sort of like, I don't know, Taliban or something, you know, and then you play, <laughs> and then you, um, the rebels are the Americans. You know? Surely it'd be the other way around, but let's not go into that. Well, you know, you know, <laughs> you, know what, you, you know what I, uh, I uh, mean, no one would be really interested in like, mm. yeah, there's a better shooter coming out on the same day, we're going to buy that instead. Um, yeah, but you can't you can't remove a thing from its context and mm. to think this, it looks like such a great recreation of the Star Wars license mm. to bind with a fun, reasonable little shooter, so that's enough for me, I'm going to really enjoy it. Yeah. Because uh, my, my main low light of the show was, as my good friend Jack Swagger would say, all the people. Uh, Just the queues, the crowds, the throngs. The stink of sweaty nerds. <laughs> yes, yeah, I mean, I'm quite sweaty as well, but it's like, that yeah. is the thing, like, Thursday was supposed to be the most quiet day. I spent, I want to say, a good two hours queuing for Halo on the quiet day. Yeah. Um, you know, obviously you spent ages queuing today, I spent ages queuing today for the Division. That's the only good thing, because I've been able to go for all four days, I've been able to go, ah, today, I, today I'm only going to go Sony and Microsoft, oh, yeah. today I'm going to go Nintendo in a bit. If See, I, I've had to try to squeeze it all into one day, yeah, so I've, I, 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 base, I've only played the games that I sort of already knew I was going to like, because mm. I didn't, I really wanted to have a go on Halo, was, say, something like The Division, mm. it's like, it might be good, but do I really want to queue for two hours yeah. to play something that ends up being crap? Yeah, that's, that's the only issue. Issue if you're only going for like one day, you got to try to think what, what to what, what am I going to really cherish that experience? And yeah, go on. you know, if you're gonna be there for like I don't know six hours, you're gonna get like three games in if you queue for like the two hours games. Uh, yeah. What are you gonna what are you gonna get in? And that's the only thing. I'm just thinking of other solutions I we think, could have. And well, I, th- I think all you need to do is you need to go to it and think I'm not going for the AAA stuff. Mm. Going for the indies. Yeah. That's the stuff that's really maybe worth going I'd for, play, I'd say. Maybe play, like, one big triple A or something that you Or just, <coughs> go to rest! <coughs> but, yeah. Instead. <laughs> or, like I said, play one big triple A you really yeah, interested so in. Yeah, so find one, maybe two that you're... Like, I did, I want Star Fox and Halo, I definitely <laughs> want to play. And then after that, I'll just wander around, take everything in. <laughs> you know, I watched a bit of the other games, but didn't play them. And then <laughs> went and played some little interesting things. Yeah, I think... Um, like I said, because of the stuff coming out soon, it wasn't as bad as last year. Like I said, last year, like, the order was... Okay, the order turned out to be not that great. Hmm. But you had the order, Bloodborne and stuff. Well, I suppose... But, like... St- I want to say you... an- another disappointment was... A-, a lot of the stuff I wanted to play just wasn't there. Mm. There's no sign of Dark Souls 3. Yeah. No sign of um, the new Transformers game. Yeah. Re- no, really. No, apart from Nintendo... No one was showing anything that's not out. Yeah, that's the this thing. Christmas. Like Microsoft was showing Rare Replay Collection, which has been out from August. Yeah, they showed FIFA, which is out already, and it's also at the PlayStation stand. It's at the EA stand, and yeah, it's, and it's at the Virgin Data stand as well. It's, I, th- I suppose the companies are treating EGX as it's aimed at people who aren't maybe super into games who go mm. along. It's a bit of fun. And they're, look, you can buy this. You can buy this. You can buy this. Yeah. So they're really using it as a marketing thing rather than. I mean, all of it is marketing. Yeah. But it could have been showing off stuff that's coming in the future, but it's more stuff yeah, that's, here's like, what is out this Christmas, go yeah, and buy it. Yeah, like, uh, take um, the PlayStation booth. I played the Uncharted collection, but you could easily add a demo of Uncharted 4 there. Yeah. There's no reason... But that... that's not for sale anytime soon, so they don't feel the need yeah, to Yeah, but it's coming March, and so it's um, Mirror's Edge and Division, which were both shown. So, mm. just like... Um, no, oh, yeah. That, it was, I mean... That could have been shown... Um, I'm just thinking what uh, Mebo Festival wasn't shown that's coming this year yeah um, obviously we talked about uh, that last night obviously the problem is the Amiibo you need to play it they could be net or something yeah they would have to chain them uh, Project Zero wasn't there um, no obviously that well Nintendo up... didn't really have an over 18 section yeah in there, so I can so understand see, like, that last year again like Bayonetta 2 was there yeah they just had that right on the show, the show floor didn't they yeah Do you just, like, I suppose you... that wasn't really scary it was just a, a bit risque and a bit of blood and yeah like, unless you're really paying attention to it, it's not that over the top. Yes. Or, like horrific. 
There was a, you know, but yeah, I mean, I had a good day, and I think it is something that's worth going to. Mm. It's, ideally, you do want to try and get a couple of days there mm. if you're really into playing everything. Yeah, you either go for the two day or the four day pass if you if you're going um, to it. Um, sort of thing, so you can check out. It's okay, like you uh, said, like we were taking the Mecha, like Balor and the Zero One console, but for them, the one day would mostly be fine because yeah. they would only go to Nintendo. No, they could have had, had, had a good long session on every game and really yeah, they could made the good, most of it. Yeah, of Nintendo. And then and poked the, around the Indies. Uh, and they could have poked around the Indies. And then maybe they popped a Guitar Hero rock band at it's the up, fun, yeah. because they're coming to the sort of thing. So maybe if you're just into like the one console, but. If like if you're just a PS4 owner, you still want to go to Ubisoft. You still want to go to EA. Yeah, you, mm. you know that's the, and you still want to get it. That's um that would be the only issue issue there, um sort of thing. Yeah. So uh, yeah, that is EGX 2015. Yeah. Later's. Cheerio. <laughs>